Hi everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at speciation. It's important to note that before you start watching this video, you should really be watching the natural selection video that comes before this. Essentially, natural selection is a mechanism that you need to understand before you start speciation. You can find that video on this channel in an earlier segment. So what exactly is speciation? Well, speciation is a culmination of changes within the genotype of an organism over time that ultimately produces a new species that wasn't there before. And we're going to look at the mechanisms of how to do that. But before we do that, we need to actually look at what is the difference between a species and a population. So let's begin with looking at what exactly is a species. So a species is a organism or a group of organisms that are similar to each other and they are capable of exchanging genes through interbreeding. In other words, I am not the same species as somebody else if we cannot exchange genes successfully with one another. In other words, if we are two different species, we cannot interbreed with each other. Now, sometimes species can interbreed with each other uh, and they're not the same species. Now, there are other mechanisms to prevent them from having offspring. It might be that their genitalia is different, that their mating rituals are different, they reproduce at different times of the year, um, or their chromosomal numbers are different. And so a key aspect of knowing what a species is, is that species are a group of individuals that can interbreed with one another and most importantly produce fertile offspring. And so species represent individuals. And we have many different examples of species names. An example could be Loxodonta africana, which would be our elephant. We have Equus uh, calibus, which is our horse. And those are species names. In other words, one species of elephant may not be able to reproduce with another species of elephant. For example, the African elephant is one species and the Asian elephant is another different species. But let's look at populations. Now, a population is a group of organisms who belong to a particular species. So what we're doing is we're taking all the individuals who are the same species and we're grouping them into populations. The next key fact is that they all need to be in the same place at a certain time. Now, two populations of the same species can interbreed with another. For example, let's say we had a population of African elephant in South Africa and a different population of African elephant in Kenya. They are the same species, but they're two separate populations because they're living in two different locations and possibly they may not be occurring in the same place at the same time. And so are they the same species? Well, yes, because they can reproduce with one another and they can produce fertile offspring. But they're two separate populations. And a population essentially represents a group of individuals of a particular species living in a certain area at a certain time. And more examples other than my African elephant would be the king penguin population, and that king penguin population can be found in lots of different uh, locations. And so those are different populations. Now, to use my elephant as an example once more, if the African elephant can be found in South Africa as one population and in Kenya as another population, we need to also look at a different species. So, for example, you get the African elephant population and then you get the Asian uh, elephant population. Now, those two groups of elephants, they're separate populations, but they're also separate species because if we were to bring them together, they would not be able to reproduce or um, produce fertile offspring. The last thing I want to clarify before we go into the steps of speciation is what exactly is the difference between speciation and natural selection? I'm going to start with natural selection because we already have knowledge on this. So natural selection is the process whereby organisms become better adapted to their environment so they can survive and they can produce more offspring. That's the goal of natural selection, choosing the survival of the fittest, essentially.
And when you have natural selection, it occurs through genetic variations. And those variations can be a mixture um, of successful traits that are passed on from generation to generation. And it ensures, yet again, we must always circle back to survival. Now, these new traits that arise often come from mutations and they can make a new species. But I want to pause on this point. Natural selection doesn't always result in a new species. It can make one, but it's not always the ultimate goal to make a new species. Another thing about um, natural selection is that it does make some observable changes within a population over a fairly short period of time. And so natural selection doesn't have to take millions of years. Natural selection can actually take up to two to seven generations before you actually can see it. In other words, there are many examples of natural selection that humans can actually observe. Some examples of the ones we have observed would be the light and dark peppered moths. These are moths found in Europe that actually went from being a black color to a white color and then back to being black again, simply because the environment they were found in changed due to human activity. And we were able to observe it in a very short period of time. Did the peppered moths become a different species? No, they didn't. They just alternated between which was the favorable trait to have. At one time in their lives, it was more favorable to be a whiter color. And in another time period, it was more favorable to be a darker, blacker color. Now, speciation, on the other hand, is the formation of a new species. And it's a distinct part of evolution. And a type of small scale evolution is happening here in that what you're doing is you're accumulating some natural selective um, adaptations and you produce a new species. Now, this can actually um, occur in a fairly short or small period of time compared to evolution as a whole. In other words, new species can arise a lot quicker than a widespread macro evolution. And some examples of speciation are allopatric, parapatric, and sympatric, although we're only going to focus on the allopatric speciation in this video. And the main defining thing about speciation is it is caused by isolation. The isolation must either be physical, like land, sea, rivers, or it can be reproductive. And I spoke about that a little bit earlier, saying reproductive isolation would be things like the genitalia don't match, the chromosomal numbers don't match, they don't know the mating calls. These are things that separate groups from each other, populations, and by separating the populations, it allows for speciation to take hold. Some examples of species that have arisen ha include the hornthorn fly, the apple maggot, so let's go into the steps to create a new species. So I have, for example, a population of deer on this island, and they are going to represent species A, the original species. Now, this is why it's important to know the difference between species and population, because I'm going to use these words a lot. So we have a population of deer on this island, and we are going to be looking at allopatric speciation, also known as geographical speciation. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to take this population of deer, and they're all the same species at this point, and I'm going to separate them by a geographical barrier. So let's say, for example, our geographical barrier that we need in order to separate our two populations is an ocean. And it needs to be a reasonably big space that's going to block our two populations of our deer from each other. And so what this does is it separates our population into two populations. And so now what we have is we have a population A on the one side of the river or of the ocean. And on the other side, we have a population B. Now, this is important. They're still the same species. 
Now, in order to turn these populations into perhaps different species to one another, we need some important steps to happen. So besides the geographical barrier appearing, we also need to have no gene flow. And what that means is, is that individuals from population A cannot reproduce with individuals from population B. They can't get across the water, maybe they can't climb over a mountain, or they can't fly a certain distance. Whatever the species can do, they can't um, cover that geographical barrier. It's just too big for them. So there's no gene flow. In other words, they're not reproducing with each other. That means everybody in population A continues to reproduce with each other, and everyone in population B reproduces with only individuals in population B. And now that they're in two different uh, locations, there's a possibility that they are going to experience different environmental pressures. Now, what are environmental pressures? They can be things like competition, diseases, differences in temperatures. And so these environmental pressures are experienced independently. And that's a big word that you must stress when you explain this in a test or exam. So now let's look into some examples of environmental pressures. So let's say on island A, there was a warmer climate and it was mostly grassland. And that's where the original parent population came from. Then we separated it with water and our other population now finds itself in a cooler climate and it's a mostly a forested area. Now, for now, nothing has happened between these two species. But because they find themselves under different environmental pressures, maybe the temperature is different or the vegetation here is different between the two, they now need to... Um, adapt to their new environment. If they don't adapt, they may become extinct. So natural selection now steps in and it selects to see, is there any variation in this deer population that we find on island B that might allow them to survive and reproduce and essentially be better at living in a cooler climate and a climate that has now produced a forest? Now, something important happens next, and that is natural selection. And we've done natural selection before, which if we refer back to it, it's essentially when nature selects a more favorable trait that will improve the organism's survival ability. And if this doesn't happen and the organism does not undergo natural selection to improve its survival and to reproduce, the organism becomes extinct. And so what we're looking at here is now population A, which was our original population. They haven't changed very much because they find themselves in the same climate and within the same um, grassland. But population B has changed over time. And so what's happened is natural selection has occurred in population B. Because it was a different environment with a different climate and it was mostly forest, there were new favorable traits that the deer needed to have in order to survive. And by chance, there was enough variation in this population of deer that allowed them to um, change and evolve. And essentially what has happened is our two populations now have become very different, both genotypically, which is very key, it's important that these changes are genotypic because these are the genes of the organism that need to change. And in order to become a new species, your genetics needs to change and it needs to be able to be passed on to future generations. And there's also been some phenotypic changes as well. We can see that in the physical appearance of our deer on island B or population B, we can see here that they've changed color and perhaps they've even changed size. It just depends on their environment. But we can see just physically Physically, that they're two separate populations now. Now, at this point in time, we need to test whether or not we have two new species, or do we just have two populations of deer that are the same species, but they're just different colors. And the only way to test whether or not two species are different is to see whether or not there has been some reproductive isolation taking place. In other words, is there something preventing these two species from reproducing successfully with one another and producing offspring? So what happens if I take away the water and I reintroduce these two populations to each other? So now let's see whether or not we've actually made two different species. So this is the question we have to ask ourselves. If the two populations were ever to meet and mix again, would they be able to interbreed and produce fertile offspring? 
Well, if they are not able to interbreed and produce fertile offspring, then they are now two different species. And so that means that if I took species A and I tried to interbreed them with species B, either they mechanically cannot reproduce with one another, which means their reproductive organs don't fit or match, or perhaps genotypically they don't match, their chromosomes don't match, or maybe they don't mate at the same time of year, or they might be able to produce offspring, but the offspring they produce is not fertile, meaning that they can't make more of themselves. And so now, if this is possible, and they do not interbreed with one another, we have now successfully made two different species of deer. They're not just two different colors or two different variations of the same kind of deer. We've now made two different species. So let's do a quick terminology recap. So we looked at the differences between a species and a population. Remember, a species is a group of individuals that can reproduce with one another and can produce fertile offspring. A population, on the other hand, is a group of species that is found in the same place at the same time in the same habitat. We then looked at geographic isolation, also known as allopatric speciation, and this is when a geographical barrier separates populations from each other of the same species and results in a new species arising. Now, what is so key in geographic isolation is the lack of gene flow, which means that the flow of genes from one population is stopped because of a barrier, like an ocean. Now, when these two populations are in separate locations, they experience selective pressures independently. Selective pressures could be things like temperature, uh, diseases, competition between individuals, or climate, or habitat. And those selective pressures um, select what is suitable for that environment, which brings us to natural selection. Natural selection is linked to these selective pressures because what's going to happen is the environment selects what is the most favorable characteristic for this organism to have in order to survive. You either have the characteristic and you survive and reproduce, or you don't have the characteristic and you have two options. Either you need to adapt and use whatever perhaps genes that are already available to you to survive. Perhaps you're lucky enough to have a mutation that assists you. Or, unfortunately, a species can become extinct if they do not respond to natural selection. Now, once we've gone through the process of speciation, we need to check whether or not the two populations we've created are actually two different species. So what we do is we interbreed them. And if they cannot interbreed and produce fertile offspring, they are now two successful separate species. Thanks again, everyone, for listening. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.